Now, as you guys know, many people have great ideas, many similar ideas, uh, and one of the, the theme of creating a format Bible is to help you make your idea, number one, a concept for a TV show, and number two, a unique proposal. Uh, because good ideas don't necessarily make a good TV show. So let's go. Uh, first of all, so my name is Alexis de Gemini. I've been 15 years in the television business, um, mainly in France, also in the US, now in China. Um, I, um, I've done, uh, right now I'm showrunner, which is finally the, the name that I found that was summarizing the best what I do. A showrunner is someone who can create a show, produce a show, sell a show, direct a show, um, and deliver the show. So it's basically the 360 job. It took me 15 years to be able to learn all the tricks and get the experience to be a showrunner. And uh, uh, this is also why I can today talk without, uh, you know, trying to fool you on what is needed to really create a format because I've been through a lot of adapting shows and creating shows. Uh, A2G Creations is my little boutique shop in Paris where I mainly focus on creating shows. After 15 years of producing big shows, uh, I'm going to show you what I did. Uh, first, I started in the music side of TV. Uh, I'm a music passionate, so I did very big, uh, I did the MTV Music Awards kind of shows in France and Europe. The M6 Awards for M6, which is a big channel in France. And then I had the opportunity to do Big Brother in France with Anne Lamour. Uh, so I launched Reality TV in France. I'm the so-called father of Reality TV uh, over there. Actually, I'm not the father. There is plenty of fathers and mothers. The first one being John DeMol and his team who created Big Brother. Actually, I'll refer to Big Brother as a format later on in the presentation. Uh, also, uh, executive produced The Pop Stars, which is another reality show that was created in New Zealand back in 2000. Uh, there was uh, five seasons of Pop Stars, two of Love Story. I also um, produced and adapted The Bachelor from the US that I bought the rights in the US and ad adapted in France for three seasons. Actually, France is the only real, I mean, only a real success of The Bachelor outside of the US, which led me to have an opportunity to co-executive produce season nine of The Bachelor in the US for ABC. That's when I started in 2006 to have a more international expertise, and I had the opportunity to produce with Warner The Bachelor in Paris, um, and uh, that gave me a, an even better look at the way the format was created by Mike Fleiss, who was the original creator of The Bachelor. I also adapted Beijing Express, which is a race around the world, each hiking. It's a bit like Amazing Race, but it's more tough. It's like Survivor meets Amazing Race. It's a great show, created by a Belgian author called Ludo Pop. And the show is actually pitched uh, in the markets by uh, Sparks, uh, Ecoline, Ecomedia. Uh, and then uh, I created, I, I, I mean, I adapted about 10 big, big shows. I also adapted America's Next Top Model in France, um, Pop Idol. So I'm an expert in adapting uh, international formats to my local market, which is France. But then I was fed up of adapting it, other people's ideas, and I said, I want to create my own stuff. So I first created a show in 2005, uh, which was called, at the time, Star Duel. It was a hint on the big craze about having celebrities singing and dancing and competing against each other. This show became a very big hit in Canada, in Quebec, called Le Match des Étoiles, and lasted five years. And then in 2010, I decided to go in China because, uh, well, what best to try and create television shows than in the biggest future market of the world? And there in China, I created Beauty Academy, uh, which is, in a nutshell, the competition to look for the best makeup artist of a country. Uh, I'll show you some footage uh, later on. And my show that I created in China, as a Frenchman, is now traveling to Brazil, and I sold the show to Globo. Global TV, which is uh, Brazil's number one media group, and the show was just uh, broadcasted since sept September. The name of the show is Desafio de Beleza. The Beauty Academy is a subtitle. And uh, we did uh, 14 times 26 minutes in Brazil, and we're going to have a second season. And th the key to creating a format Bible, actually, is, is not only to create the show for the first edition, but as I will explain with, to you, and, uh, is that it's also the key to have your format travel around the world. Uh, please, if you have questions, the light is on. You 
can interrupt me anytime. Let's make this very interactive and, and practical for you guys. Um, first, of course, I mean, everybody's got ideas, but if I had one advice to give to anyone here in this room, it's that you have to create something original and personal. Uh, everybody's kind of getting inf influenced by all the big shows, and that's fine. I mean, when I created Beauty Academy, the show per se is not very original. It's a competition show to look for the best talent of an industry. Well, I already had done pop stars, I had done pop idol, uh, I had done America's Next Top Model. All these shows are the same structures. It's the same mechanics. But what makes it unique is in the industry or the area you're going to go to. And as far as I'm concerned, I wanted to do something about makeup artists. That's where my unique personal involvement got really into uh, the format creation. And how did that idea came to me? Because you have ideas, and they come from everywhere, every day, every five minutes. I was just talking with someone back there and, uh, uh, from Singapore, and she was raising an issue about the Singapore culture, and that gave me an idea that I started to write down in my notebook. I want to do a special dating show, a new dating show. So I'm, I'm grabbing stuff all the time. Then at one moment, you're ready to write it. Uh, so basically, when you're ready to write it, it's a very individual, personal process, and you have to make it very personal. Uh, you're basically the first viewer of your show. When you're writing the Format Bible, you're at home, and the show unfolds in your head. So if you're bored as the first viewer, it means your show sucks. If you're excited, if you're passionate, well then, maybe at least you have one viewer, you, and then maybe you'll have more viewers, the channel, the producers, and then the real end viewer. So why would you care about writing a format Bible? Uh, because it might sound uh, uh, incredibly boring and uh, academic and administrative. Uh, well, for, for different kinds of reasons. First of all, you don't write a format Bible un unless you have a concept. The first thing is you have to have an idea, then a concept. Then you write the format Bible to really help you create a unique proposal. So the format Bible is a tool to be creative. It's not an administrative tool to register your formats and be legally protected. That's the end result. That's one of the end results, but that, that's not the first priority. The first priority is to make an exciting show. You need to write a format Bible to pitch it to your partner and clients. You know, I like the image of the iceberg. When you pitch, usually it's one sentence or two. Uh, I've been pitching in channels for 15 years. Basically, you have the... I I'm just going to share with you a little story. I was so producing in France a lot of shows, but my dream was to go to Los Angeles to produce for the US. And uh, so I, I kind of asked for meetings, and uh, the American way is, well, if people really... Uh, I mean, people give you a chance. So I had a meeting, I had a 15-minute meeting with uh, a person called Andrea Wong, who at the time was the head of alternative programming at ABC. Very big person, very prominent person in LA. And she gave me 15 minutes. I'm, you know, this little French guy, which is something I love about America is this. People get to receive you. In France, it takes six months to have a meeting with the secretary, which sucks. And then I arrive in the office, I took the plane. Huh? So for the 15-minute meeting, I prepare one month, I take my plane, I pay my ticket, I go to the Starbucks uh, down the building in Burbank. I'm like, ooh, this is very exciting. I'm going up, I go into the office, and she says, welcome, sit down. She takes the phone, uh-huh, uh-huh, okay. No. The 15-minute 15, 15 pitch turns down into a five-minute pitch. She says, Alexi, I'm sorry, you have five minutes. Okay, so I've been preparing for a month, I've taken my plane to LA, I have five minutes. So, how am I going to do this? Well, in five minutes, I basically have three sentences to say. Now, if you want to have those three sentences flow out of your mouth perfectly, you need to have all the format Bible ready beneath. It's like an iceberg. The pitch is the 10%, but if you don't have the 90% prepared under the floating line, you're going to screw that one. So I was super ready, I had a super pitch, and I actually sold in one minute my show to her. The show was very, it's, it was not a unique show because I was proposing her to do The Bachelor that she had on ABC in France. Because I thought, I, I knew the show was going down in ratings, and I knew she had a problem. 
And sometimes when you want to create a show, you also have to look at what is the channel's problem. You can have a great idea, but you can also propose something that you think is going to suit the channel's problem. And ABC's problem was their franchise, big franchise, The Bachelor, was going down the sink. And so I proposed her, let's take the show in France because the American audience is going to love watching The Bachelor in Paris, in Bordeaux, in Monaco, in Saint-Tropez, and we're going to make it French because France is the country of romance and seduction. That was it. She said, have a meeting with Warner, let's do it. And six months later, we're shooting the show in France. So the format Bible or the formatted idea is for you to have a good pitch, and the pitch is going to be five minutes. Uh, of course, also the format Bible, if the show is to be a reality, helps you to budget the show and to launch the production. Because if you really want to be able to sell your show, at one point people are going to ask you how much does it cost. So you need to be able to have a document to work with a line producer, production partner, or yourself to be able to budget the show. You cannot budget a show without a Bible. You can have a great idea, but how many people I'm going to have to travel from Paris to Shanghai, how many... Um, What's the size of my studio? How many cameras do I need to shoot? How many editors do I need to? Well, all those questions need to be answered at one point. And then, of course, if you really want to make it big in this industry, the, the beauty of formats is that they travel around the world. I mean, there is a great format from Singapore, the, the, the musical in the kitchen format that traveled around the world. Uh, so everybody in the world, even from a tiny country or a very big country, can create a Fantastic idea. Right now, the people who are the most creative in the world are from Israel. In Israel, they're creating so many formats. First of all, because they're super creative. Second of all, because their environment is super shaky. So they're always having, you know, emotional moments that are good for creative process. And third of all, because they have the greatest broadcasters in the world. The, the Israeli broadcasters are daring to take risks. And you need good broadcasters to create a format, by the way, because if you don't have broadcasters who are ready to take risks, well, you cannot create a format. Me, I'm creating my formats in China because French broadcasters don't want to take risks. So uh, anyway, so that's your format Bible's need. Then 30 minutes, it's 27 minutes, actually. So uh, in 27 minutes, you should be ready to start and write your format Bible, hopefully. Uh, let's start with a little quiz. Uh, please give me the name of this show. Twelve people live together for three months in a house, secluded from the world, and filmed 24-7. Thank you. Big brother. Uh, basically, in a nutshell, in one line, you have to be re ready to sum up what you're going to work on, what you're going to do. Eighteen contestants live on a deserted island for one month and compete to be the final survivor. Thank you. It's easy to do a show, huh? Survivor. I'll tell you, if you're interested, I'll tell you how actually the uh, English guy who created Survivor went through the whole creative process, because it took him two years, just for two lines, but two years. Thousands of amateur singers participate in a casting to become the new pop stars. Too many. <laughs> I'm sorry? Too many. <laughs> well, there's two options. <laughs> I think, yeah, The Voice, pop stars. Well, on this one, I put pop idol. <laughs> but then that's why pop idol and pop stars in The Voice are formats because basically you think it's the same show, but it's not the same show. Well, what about this idea of those judge being like that? And you talk to me, and I'm like, oh, I like your voice. By the way, how do you think John DeMol's team got this idea? Any clue? It's, it's right in your face. You all know why he, I mean, I think this is the reason why he created the show. It's, it's, but it's very simple. No? Okay. Well, back in three, four, four years ago, there's a show called uh, uh, Britain's Got Talent. And it was a very big show, very big phenomenon. And at one point, the winner of the show, well, not, not a, I mean, in the middle of the show, there is this very ugly, fat old woman. What's her name? Susan yeah, Susan Boy. She's singing like an angel. But frankly speaking, nobody would sign her a record deal. Nobody had, actually. And when you look at her, you're like, well, I'm not sure this is a pop star. I wouldn't bet on it. And I'm sure that John DeMol's team at one point said, listen, man, nobody would have signed that girl. There is something there. She has a fantastic voice. But the physic appearance doesn't match with what we... So let's close our eyes and let's listen to her. Well, this is the pitch of the voice. And this is the start of the format. Because 
this amazing way of selecting people being backward makes the unique proposal of The Voice against Popato. So actually, I was reading an article this morning on The Hollywood Reporter about The Hunger Games. The creator of The Hunger Games, which is a book, then a movie, was just watching TV. And she said, oh, I'm going to do a, a gladiator kind of reality show turn into a book. Meaning that an idea can come from watching TV. You don't have to go into the library and start scratching your head. Ideas come from everywhere. And John DeMol's idea on this one from Talpa came, I think, from another show, China Got Talent. Twelve amateur cooks compete to win $100,000. Any clue? Ah, you should know. Okay. Uh, master Chef, but well, there is Top Chef. Well, what's the difference between Master Chef and Top Chef? Now, the, the main difference is, is who you're competing with. In Master Chef, it's amateurs, in Top Chef, it's professional cooks. That's it. Um, and then there is a lot of smaller differences, but the basic difference is this one. So to make a, re a unique original proposition doesn't take a long of a stretch, at least on this one. Uh, thousands of contestants with an amazing talent compete to win $100,000. Well, this is the number one show in the world right now. I took Thailand for, for pleasure's sake. Um, this one I know very well, I told you about. 25 single women compete to seduce the Prince Charming. Well, any idea? Okay. Uh, by the way, I think, uh, well, I think I know. Mike Flies created The Bachelor, I think, in absolutely, uh, Approximately five minutes. He had done a show on Fox uh, where he was trying to marry a, a beautiful girl with a prince. He was looking for a prince. He found a prince somewhere in Austria who was, you know, an old prince with no money but a title, brought him to the US, organized this big special event with, I'm going to marry a prince. The show was okay, but. And then he said, ah, I like this idea. I want to do something more profitable. I want to have a real show that's going to last forever. And he decided to create The Bachelor, which is a pretty American concept. The Bachelor is, is, is a concept in itself. And by the way, each good format is a very, usually linked to a very good title. If you have a problem getting a good title, it means your problem, you might have a problem with your show. And 12 amateur makeup artists compete to become their country's new top stylist. Very simple, Beauty Academy, which uh, I'll tell you about later. Maybe let, let's just watch a, a, small, a small video of, of my show, and I'll tell you a little bit more on how I wrote the Bible, and this will be the next part of the presentation. Can we put louder, please? 欢迎来到美丽学院。东方卫视重磅推出的彩妆真人秀《美丽学院》第二季将为丝芙兰寻找中国超级美妆巨星，很棒的一个作品，谢谢你。那没必要吗？不要再过来。<笑>今年我们将从武汉、沈阳、广州、北京、上海的数千名选手中挑选出全国十强，最后的赢家将会成为丝芙兰新晋美妆巨星。最新一季《美丽学院》充满惊喜，我们全新搭建的摄影棚将供选手在比赛期间居住，并且全程记录他们的生活点滴。我们邀请到三位重量级的国际嘉宾担任《美丽学院》第二季的评委，《美丽学院》由丝芙兰赞助，国际团队倾力打造。我们拥有超凡实力的选手，并且他们会面对非同寻常的挑战。他们会来到竹林，打造一组与动物一起拍摄的时尚大片妆容。晚上，他们还将展现更具想象力的伪装造型
，选手们将为享誉全球的音乐剧《猫》的演员化妆。选手还会到水族馆去完成他们从未接触过的人体彩绘。选手要在有限的时间里使出看家本领，来完成一组奢华妆容的打造。选手还将变身为模特，来演绎 Michael Jackson、强尼·德普、卡尔大帝、玛丽莲·梦露的经典形象。我们还要为特别来宾的上海疯狂夜打造一组华丽妆容，敬请关注东方卫视，欢迎来到美丽学院，欢迎来到美的世界。So basically,、uh, when I tell first that people, well, I'm doing a makeup show in China, people are like, oh, makeup? Okay, well, fine, but、uh, who cares?、Uh, the main idea is, I have the idea of of create the format about makeup artists because I did a show called America's Next Top Model in France, France Next Top Model, and when I did the show, I casted someone to be in the jury who was a makeup artist, and also I had、uh, Karl Lagerfeld, the the German designer, to be part of the show, and I could discover that behind the scenes, the makeup artists were a very interesting crowd, very creative people, and I thought, well, there are so many talent shows, but there is nothing about makeup, and I think actually those people. Are very creative. They are like painters. When they're very good, they're super good. So that's where the idea came from. And then it took me five years to actually find the right moment, the right people to make the show happen. And Sephora, my sponsor, also helped me finance the development of the show. But basically, the idea is, is one line. Then what you see there is that the format really when I started to write the format and then the scripts for for the first season. I really dealt. I mean, I really did a lot of research, and I got to see that makeup was a tremendous、uh, artistic career to to go into, to do makeup, camouflage makeup in the bamboo forest.、Uh, for example, I did makeup with the、uh, the Olympic team, Chinese Olympic team, underwater dancer team.、Uh, so the makeup artists were making the girls up, and then they were dancing underwater. All these kind of things come when you have a well structured research, and then you can really become creative. So. Uh, let's go deep into it. Basically, I repeat, a format Bible is there to help you be more creative. It's not a boring thing; it's an exciting thing. You just have to start. So let's warm up. First of all, there is five questions easy that you can answer uh, to uh, start writing the, the Bible. First,、um, first of all, I don't have the time to talk about unscripted. So、uh, unscripted, I'm sorry. So I will only talk about unscripted formats in this presentation. Unscripted formats are usually game shows. So, who are going to play the game? Amateur or professionals? When is it done? Is it a live show? Is it a recorded show? Pop Idol is live. Survivor is recorded. Beauty Academy is recorded. The Voice is live. That makes a lot of difference in terms of budget and production. So, you have to kind of ask yourself those kind of questions. What are going to be the stakes of the show? Am I going to win a husband, like in The Bachelor? Am I going to win a job, like in The Apprentice? Am I going to get a recording contract, like in Pop Idol? You name it. How? I mean, do I want to script this? Do I want to do purely reality TV? Do I want to mix scripted and non-scripted,、uh, which is the new trend right now? Well, you kind of have. Need to have a sense of the writing, the filming of the show. Pop stars is a docu soap, so it's shot like a documentary. Pop Idol is shot like a variety show. Well, that makes a lot of difference too, because it's not the same directors, it's not the same writing. There is a lot of, of editing to do pop stars. There is a live show for Pop Idol. And where are you going to do this? On a deserted island, or in a television studio, in Paris or Shanghai? Uh, all these are basic questions, but they can help you warm up and start writing the Bible. Then you go to the concept that needs to be original, unique, and then you will be able, depending on the country you're in, you can legally protect your idea. France, by the way, is a great country for that because there is a great intellectual property law that helps the writer to protect his or her idea. So 
So the concept starts with this pitch, this premise we say in the movie business, this one-liner that tells you everything. Okay, my show is going to be, I'm going to look for the new star top model. Okay, that's my pitch. Then sometimes, well, that's the way I do it, usually you find the title right away because the title helps you define the environment you're going to be. It can become at the end or at the beginning, but for example, for um, pop stars, I'm sure right in the beginning of the writing, they were like, okay, we want to create the new pop stars. Let's, that's pop stars. And usually the, the title you use as a non-definitive title usually is the definitive title. Uh, at least if, if you're hot, if you're in the good mood and if you're writing a good idea, it comes naturally. Big Brother is a natural translation to the concept of having people living secluded in house for, for three months. The duration doesn't sound very exciting, but have been a broadcaster, very fast people will ask you, okay, what's the format? Uh, 26 minutes, 52, how many episodes? 10, 12, 1? So you have to be able to know how long this is going to last. Then you move on to the key ingredients, the casting. Uh, the casting is very different depending on the show. Popeye amateurs. Uh, the Bachelor, the casting is one Bachelor, so you need to find the guy who's got money, social status, and the girls around him who are going to be uh, singles. Now, you might want to write in your format Bible that you're going to put one woman in the casting who's not single, she's already married because you want to create drama. But that's part of the writing process. But the basic point is basically, okay, my casting is going to be 25 single women and one fantastic uh, rich single man. Uh, my casting is going to be amateur singers. By the way, in The Voice, uh, the, the format says that this is amateur singers with an incredible voice who are going to be the voice of a country. The truth is they're not amateurs at all. They are pretending or they're, the production is making them look like they're normal people. But usually in the voice, these people are singing for many, many, many years in bars, karaoke. Uh, they're like professional singers, but not celebrities. So the, the twist here is to make them look like they're amateurs, but they're not. So, I mean, this is where you actually take this kind of decision. I want to, I'm bored with amateurs because I want perfection. So I'm going to take real singers, but I think for the viewer it's better if they look amateurs, so I'm going to pretend they are. Well, this is where you're actually creating a format. It's being a bit nasty too. I mean, trying to play with the audience. You decide what kind of guest you're going to have. Uh, it's not in all shows, but uh, in a lot of those shows, you have celebrity coming over for one or two episodes. Uh, even like for Project Runway, Heidi Klum is the super celebrity host, but uh, she also has some people coming in and out. Uh, so you can have ideas of guests that will spice up your content. The decor is very important. Uh, the Pop Idol adaptation in France was first season done completely the way the UK does it, which is a very blue uh, studio, television studio set. Um, the amazing thing was that it was a good format written in England, but in France it didn't work because people thought that if I want a pop star or a pop idol, I need to have the feel that she or he is singing on a live stage. So for season two, the show was moved to a real live stage and not a TV studio. And that made all the difference because the show became more legitimate to the viewer. Because the studio was telling the viewer, we're looking for a real performer. Okay, so that's the art of adapting a show. It's not necessarily to copy the show. You have to understand how much your audience is going to react to the original format. But by deciding what is the decor, you're telling a lot of information to the viewer. It's at the core of the concept. Of course, in Survivor, the island is at the core of the concept, and the house is at the core of Big Brother. The superb villa is at the core of The Bachelor, uh, and so on and so forth. Usually, in non-scripted, you have juries. Not always. In The Bachelor, you don't have a jury. The Bachelor himself is eliminating women. But you usually have a jury. So who's going to be in my jury? What kind of personalities I'm going to have? Pop Idol, actually, in England, was a big success because of the jury first, not because of the concept. Because, I mean, not because of the contestants. The jury was fighting with Simon Cowell being the evil guy, and that made all the difference. So you have to really think about the jury, and you have to be able, when you pitch the show, to say, I'm seeing this, this, and that person in the jury. Of course, the prize is important because that 
embodies the stakes of the show. Is it a job like in The Apprentice with money attached? Is it a recording contract? Is it a husband? Once again, you have to think about that because that's going to create the formula. The host. Is it the host of the channel? Is it a celebrity? Uh, there is a big difference between uh, having the host uh, uh, within the channel, like for Popaddle, it's the channel's host, and when you have ID Klum uh, hosting uh, Project Runway, that makes a big difference. She's more legitimate than anybody else because she's been a model for many years. So you have to think about that too. By the way, I'm trying to develop Beauty Academy in Southeast Asia, and one of my problems is to find a celebrity to attach to the show to make it more sellable throughout Asia. Uh, and then the stakes. The stakes is how much is going the show to be uh, a drama, dramatic and changing experience for the contestants. Is it a life or death situation? Uh, is, is the show going to change the life of the people who are invested in it? For example, in France, Big Brother, which was renamed Loft Story, uh, became a big hit at the moment where the beautiful, blonde, sexy, aggressively sexy girl who was supposed to be a whore turned out to be a Cinderella and a princess and she, she dated a guy, the guy threw her away after two days and she became a victim and then people actually realized that behind this very beautiful blonde uh, but very aggressive and too sexy there was someone more interesting and then her life changed throughout the show. Well actually the stake in Big Brother, it's, of course it's you're gonna, you're gonna make money if you win the show but the real stake is are you going to survive living with 12 other unknown strangers into this secluded world? I wouldn't want to spend three months with people in a house secluded. Well, actually, when I did Big Brother, it gave me an idea. I was like, where is the other place where I hate being with people if I don't like those people? Where is it really hell? And it reminded me, it reminded me of my vacations on a boat. I was with some friends on the boat and we go out for a week sailing and you know, the friend invites another friend and you have this bastard who's there, you know, ruining your vacation for a week and you cannot throw him out of the way. I mean, he's on the boat, so you have to live with this guy. I said, ah, oh, well, that, that's, I want to do that. And then I created a show with NMO. Actually, to, to give you the exact idea, I saw a show in Sweden called Harem. It was a strict format. Harem was four single girls walking in the, uh, in, in the beach and trying to look for a date. Pretty boring. I was like, we're missing something here. But I like the idea of the girls trying to look for someone, but it's not good enough. So I, I added two different elements and I created a new format called Operation Seduction. The first element was, I want those four girls to have power. I want them to have many men and they can send those, home, those men away because I want to give the power to the men, to the women, not to the men. Usually in dating, in dating shows, they are very ma macho, machists. So a bachelor is the guy who decides uh, who I'm going to keep, who I'm going to throw away. Well, in that show, I wanted the women to be able to throw away the guys. And what better than to throw them away in the water? So, well, we're going to be on a boat. And I thought the boat is going to be great because they're going to have, the girls are going to sleep in the beautiful luxury quarter of the, of the big boat, and the boys are going to leave uh, on the deck sleeping in sleeping mats. Uh, so basically, I'm going to turn the boys into slaves, uh, and they're going to serve as those women, and those women are going to let those guys go away. It's, go it's good for us machist, uh, you know, macho Frenchmen to, to go the other way. And so uh, it was so funny. I mean, I wanted to do a funny reality show. And just to give you a last hint, I said, how can I make that absurd? Okay, it's going to be totally absurd. I'm going to have a thousand boys casted throughout France. We're going to bring them to Paris. And I'm going to line them up in the Paris airport on the tarmac, okay? I'm going to put a plane next to it. And uh, actually, I didn't rent the plane. I'm going to fake the plane because after, they're going to all go in a budget airline. But that, I'm not going to shoot. <laughs> so I pretend there is a jet. And you have those thousand guys lining up. And the four girls that I had selected with my team were like, oh, well, you, not bad, not bad, what's your name? They picked 20, they did, uh, no, they, they picked 50, they did individual interviews, and then they picked 20, and they said, okay, guys, come over for a cruise with us. 
that's, that's how the show was created. It's, it's, it's a bunch of information that I mixed together, but the stake was uh, fun, having fun through dating the other way around in a secluded environment, which is a boat. Uh, the mechanics. There is also a lot of casting in those formats, usually, uh, and usually you do a local casting. So, for example, in Beauty Academy, I decided to go to six cities in China to do the casting. I could have done the casting by telephone or through internet. I decided to go and physically go with my team to do the castings in six cities. So that's a decision you can take while writing the Bible. Then you have the selection process. How many people I'm going to cast? How is going to be the elimination process to, fi to finalize the casting, the, the last 20 or the last 10 contestants. Then you're going to have to define the challenge rules. Uh, basically, in Survivor, for example, there are two challenges that are key to the structure of the format, the comfort challenge and the elimination challenge. Well, those two needed to be designed, developed, and they're in the format Bible of Survivor. Uh, and you have that in many, in all the shows, there is challenge rules so that each challenge takes you to a next step into the storytelling. For example, in Beijing Express, which I produced in France, the first challenge is about getting immunity against elimination. And the second challenge is about um, getting comfort, uh, bonuses and stuff like that. Then you have to decide how you're going to rank those people who are competing against each other. And then, of course, you have to decide what is the elimination process. How does that take place? Because basically, right now, in any game show format that is a non-scripted show, apart from some docu-soaps, of course, but in a format, what we call a format, which is really something that goes with a mechanic, there is an elimination process. How, did that, how does that go? Do I have the viewer involved? Is it only the jury? Is it the contestants themselves? Um, do I have an online voting, telephone voting? Stuff like that. In the format Bible, you have to tell about the storytelling, um, drama construction. So the guy who created Survivor first did a show, he's a British journalist, and he did a show with uh, four corporate guys who were on an island alone, and it was kind of a documentary kind of format. It was not really a format, it was an experiment. So two years before he actually created Survivor, he had been on the team to do that show. That show had bombed in England, but that had given him the sense of something there. And then when he wrote the Bible, uh, I, was, I was featured in a documentary uh, about reality TV, and I could see him explain, so that's how, how I can relate what he, he said in the documentary. He was explaining how being a journalist, he wanted Survivor to, he wanted to put people on an island for a surviving experiment. He wanted to shoot this as a documentary. Now, if you look at other shows, you could shoot it like, like a big variety game show, like Interville, this big show, French show that travels around the world, uh, which is more like a studio-based kind of show, even though it's outdoor. Now, he wanted to do a documentary kind of survival show. Well, that's very key to the creation of Survivor, and it's very key to the creation of reality TV. Is I'm going to shoot that to make it real, not fake. So the, it's the, the whole drama starts with the filming that you're going to imagine in your head, how I want to shoot this. And then, of course, the drama is about who I'm going to get together, what, what is the setting, how do I want to structure that so that it becomes interesting and dramatic. That's where I'm at right now, the narrative progression. Of course, narrative progression takes mechanism, elimination structure, a lot of, de of details. But think of the way you want to tell the story. You can tell the story uh, in very, very different ways, uh, and, and that is going to create the unicity of your format. You know, Pop Idol and Pop Stars, basically, as this gentleman said, it's all the same show. But if you look into it, why you have two shows like that? Pop Stars is done like a documentary, it's pre-recorded, not live. Casting, selection of a group, recording of an album, live show at the end. Pop Idol is the same beginning, but then we take those people, we put them on a live stage to do performing. Well, suddenly the whole show dif differentiates from pop stars. So, and and the, the progression of the narration is different. Because in Pop Idol, there is elimination till the last episode, like in The Voice, in pop stars, elimination stops at the middle of the format, then you have the creation of the group and the album. 
The editing is key. Uh, editing, uh, I could do 45 minutes on editing, but obviously you have to think about the way you want to edit this. Uh, is it going to look like a sitcom? Is it going to look like a movie? Is it going to look like a documentary? Direction and style, well, my show, I wouldn't pretend my show is super original. What I think is quite original and why Chinese people actually, SMG and Dragon TV, hired me to do my own show. They could have hired a Chinese director. It's because I have my own directing style. And the style makes the show unique. Um, uh, so you can work on that first by, uh, you know, having a plan for script development. Script development actually comes after you have done the Bible, so don't bother too much at that point. But basically, you're going to have to write episodes further down the line. You can think of the shooting plan, you can think of the decor and the lighting, you can think of the music and the voiceover. Well, just one quick note on that. You know, those reality shows, you have two options. Option one, people tell the story by themselves. You have talking heads interviews. People talk and have interviews, and you have to do interviews all the time to make sure the story is going to be told by that. Option two is, okay, I don't want to do too much interviews, I'm going to do a voiceover. Well, that's a different way of producing, that's a different way of storytelling, and you have to have those kind of decisions during the format writing. Graphic design and animation, how do you want the show to look? Is it going to be super graphic animated? Is it just plain? That's part of the style. I've been a bit long, I'm sorry. I hope that we just have a few minutes still left if you have any questions. I hope it was not too boring, and uh, please feel free to ask me any question about what we just said. Yes, sir? Uh, good morning. Uh, good I'm morning. curious, when, when you're designing a Bible for what is essentially a TV format, do you also consider um, the uh, other platforms? Absolutely. Or, yeah. Absolutely. Uh, actually, I tend even more now to think more of the platforms first and the TV next, uh, because platform gives me more room to be creative. Uh, uh, Anyway, I mean, to answer your question, simply any TV show now has an internet-related environment and ecosystem, so you have to be able to pitch that too, because channel is going to ask you about that. And then, actually, you can also go further on and include the internet element of it to be part of the storytelling. For example, how much am I going to have to... For, for example, in China, in my show, it happens that in China, you cannot vote through telephone to eliminate contestants. You could, back in the days, Supergirl, which is hist historically China's number one and first reality show, might it be or not a copycat of Pop Idol, is not the question, but it's the first biggest show in China. 120 million voters use their phones to vote on Supergirl. After that, voting on the phone was banned by the local authorities for reasons you might understand. Uh, now, what do they do? Well, then they try to have interactive with their audience through internet. And in Beauty Academy, I could not have phone voting, but I have internet voting, and we had on the first season 25 million votes um, on the show. So yes, internet must be embedded in your thinking, and actually you could also think that part of the show is going to be on internet, part of the show on TV. Yes? Talking with the general public in some of the, my concept of reality TV, the general feedback that I get from people is reality TV is passe, it's going down, ratings going down, nobody's watching them, not that popular in this part of Asia, market's not big enough. What's your general view of that? Well, th this, is, this, is, uh, this is nonsense. It's 10 years I'm being told that reality TV is, di is dying and it's 10 years. People don't have to understand that reality TV is not a trend, it's a genre. And the genre is there, it's going to stay forever. And actually the genre is moving, it's a prototype that is changing face. So uh, when people say that, they might be right when they say there has been some generations of reality TV shows and the writing of TV shows is moving. That does change. And that's actually a very uh, healthy process because that keeps the show and the genre alive. But the genre is there to stay. I mean, The Voice is, is the number one show in China. Okay, maybe China is a big back, but look at the US. Uh, Amazing Race, Survivor, his 18th season already, and it's still the biggest show on CBS. I don't see that as a sign of going down. And by the way, the fun part is, reality TV regenerated the fiction genre 
I'm always like, people, you know, people like to bash us, reality kind of TV people, because we're, we're, we're doing trash TV. Of course we are. And they're doing art. But just let me tell you a story. Uh, if you have seen The Lost, the great fiction, uh, and if you have seen the DVD, and if you have seen the bonuses, you will understand that Lost comes from Survivor. The author, the creator of Lost, just took Survivor and did a fiction out of it. So, well, actually, maybe reality TV people are more art people than you might expect. But so, to finish on your question, I think reality TV is a genre, it's not a trend, so it will be there forever. The question is, what is the writing of the show looking like to make it relevant to the country you're in? Any other question? No? Well, thank you very much for your attention.